John Henty here with news of another star guest on this week's edition of Nice and Easy. The News Headlines is a radio comedy show that recently made the headlines for its top comedy presenter, Roy Hudd. Well, getting that Sonny Gold Award, I thought, well, this is the Gold Watch job, really, this, isn't it? Thank you for, for all your services to radio over the years. And I thought, does this mean the big, the big farewell kiss? No, it certainly didn't. And Roy continues to go from strength to strength in the wonderful world of show business as we discover on Nice and Easy. Our parlour wanted papering and Pa said it was waste To call a paper hanger in and so he made some paste He bought some rolls of paper, got a ladder and a brush And with me mother's night he honoured it, he made a rush When father papered the parlour, you couldn't see far for paste Dabbing it here, dabbing it there, paste and paper everywhere Mother was stuck to the ceiling, the kids were stuck to the floor I never knew a blooming family so stuck up in parlour <laughs> The pattern was blue roses with its leaves red, white and brown He stuck it wrong way up and now we all walk upside down And when he trimmed the edging off the paper with the shears The cat got underneath it and the cut off both its ears When Pa the paper the parlour, you couldn't see Pa for paste A dabbing it here, a dabbing it there, paste and paper everywhere Mother was stuck to the ceiling, the kids were stuck to the floor I never knew a blooming family so stuck up before Soon Dad fell down the stairs and dropped his paper hanger's can On little Henrietta sitting there with her young man The paste stuck them together as we thought would be for life We had to call the parson in to make the man and wife When Father came to the parlour, you couldn't see Bob for paste Dabbing it here, dabbing it there, paste and paper everywhere. Mother was stuck to the ceiling, the kids were stuck to the floor. I never knew a blooming family so stuck up before. We're never going to move away from that house anymore. For father's gone and stuck the chairs and tables to the floor. We can't find our piano, though it's broad and rather tall. We think that it's behind the paper pass stuck on the wall. We're father, paper, the bar, and the bouncy the face. Dabbing it here, dabbing it there, place the paper everywhere. Father was stuck to the ceiling, the kids were stuck to the floor. Now it's time to meet Roy Hudd, Croydon-born comedian who's been a star for well over 20 years and has close associations with hospital radio. We've laughed with him in summer shows, pantomimes, on radio and on television. His radio career, in fact, started back in the 60s with Workers' Playtime and has, for the past 13 years, been crowned with BBC Radio 2's popular award-winning The News Hudlines. The show has taken every radio trophy at home and abroad and has won, Roy, the Sony Awards, or was it the Variety Club, that's it, the Variety Club Radio Personality of the Year Awards, and then this year it was the Sony Awards for radio. And when we met recently, I just had to congratulate the lad on yet another feather in his cockney cap. Yeah, thanks, John. I must say that was a real wonderful thing to happen. I was I was absolutely tickled pink. I got no idea, you know, it was like, this is your life, really. <laughs> got no idea it was going to happen, and I was very flattered, and it was lovely. And I have a theory that um, it could not have been a better award for you because it was about radio. That's exactly it. One of my, my great love, really, radio. You know, I mean, it's the greatest medium for comedy. Always has been and always will be. You know, it's the old imagination, isn't it? it? Gets to work. We were talking about the news headlines to someone the other day, and they said, "Why has it gone on for 14 years? We've been doing it." You know, and I said, "Well, you know, point one. I said it's terrific turnover of, of young scriptwriters. You know, as soon as they sort of do any good, the television nabs them and off they go. But they all seem to cut their teeth in radio, and they all say if you can write a radio script." Everything else is dead easy after that because, you know, it's, you've got to write so many gags to the minute in radio, you know, whereas with television you can get a visual effects, you can do all those sort of things. You can sort of pad it out a bit, but on radio it's pure, raw comedy, down to the jokes. You know, the great thing, of course, is, you know, you do use your imagination and that's the thing. They've often talked about doing headlines on television, you know, and I've always sort of turned it down as an idea because I thought, well, I think it would spoil all the sort of 
uh, you know, the slap happy feel that Hudlines has got. And you'd have to get Chris Emmett to look like all these people and everything and sit in makeup for hours. And I think you'd destroy, you know, the momentum of the headlines, which is the great thing, because when Chris does the voices, which is brilliant, impressionist, I mean, the pictures come in people's <laughs> minds straight away, you know, and that's it. Yes. But if you've got to make up and do all that for it, it's a real pain in the neck, and it would it would destroy the momentum of headlines, yes. which I think is its great thing. Radio also is very immediate, and so was the headlines, always on the ball. You didn't have to worry about a backdrop. You were there, weren't you? That's right, and the great thing about headlines is, of course, you, you know, we record it Thursday lunchtime, and it goes up Thursday night, yes. so we can write gags right up until the actual recording make it that topical whereas television you really can't unless you're doing it live mm. and no one wants to risk doing live television these days which I think is a shame mm. well I don't know what your inspiration was Roy but uh, go back to some of those shows you used to listen to around the old steam radio in the, in the yeah. war I suppose wasn't it wireless we used to call yeah. it in those days when I, did. I mentioned it to a kid the other day I said oh I'm on the wireless next week she said what you know I don't know what a wireless meant yeah. It was very important to us yeah. when it was wireless, wasn't yeah, it? Right. But, uh, no, I think my early sort of shows were the usual ones, you know, the um, John Sharman's Music Hall on Saturday nights, which had all the sort of big stars in it. I was a mad fan of Much Binding in the Marsh, <laughs> Dickie Murdoch and, and <laughs> Kenneth Horne and that lot, and uh, certainly a great fan of Navy Mixture with Eric Barker, uh, Stan Deasy, Charlie Chester, all those sort of wartime shows. And it, Ma was a little bit beyond me as a kid, I must say. I thought it was a... It, probably for a child it was a bit of an adult show because it was terribly topical mm. and Hanley was a marvellous topical comedian you know and apparently he used to do the same thing as we do on Hudlines he'd write stuff right up until the actual recording you know mm. and if something had happened in the news bang it would go into the script right. and so I think probably Tommy Hanley was a little bit too sophisticated for me as a child but when you hear the recordings now my god they still stand up because it was that great thing of bang 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 different characters coming in all the time it was a great thing of radio you know it was all pictures again we all knew exactly what Colonel Chinstrap looked like and, <laughs> and Miss Hotchkiss didn't <laughs> And uh, you know, Mona Lot and all those marvelous Can I characters. Do you now, sir? That's right. Oh, Sophie Tuck Shop, Lord Bigger Banger, and all those. You know, we were Chief Bigger Banger, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, we all knew exactly what they looked like, and that was the great thing, I think, of it, Ma. And that when you hear it again now, being involved in the thing, you realise what a marvelous, clever show it was. Mm. Absolutely right. And, of course, the wartime and those audiences for radio in those days. Dear well, it must have been enormous, yeah. you know. It must have been. I mean, it was the thing I always remember. They used to do Navy Mixture. That was yeah. another show I used yeah, to listen yeah. to. And there used to be a conjurer on it every week called Sadani. Oh, yes. Sadani. <laughs> and he had a catchphrase called, don't be fried. You remember, <laughs> don't be fried, don't be fried. And he used to tell you how to do a trick. And we were evacuated to Northampton during the war. And I used to be up in bed way before, you know, um, Navy Mixture came on. I always used to listen to those sounds. So Danny's trick tonight requires, and they used to tell you the props. And I used to try and find these props. And I sit on the stairs outside the room listening. And I could never make one of these tricks work. I'm dying to meet Sadani ever since. He's long gone now. I think he's gone right, to the great right. uh, disappearing cabinet in the sky now. But again, that's the magic, if you like, of radio. I mean, look at Peter Bruff and Archie Andrews. Ventriloquism on radio. I know. It was amazing the things they did, wasn't it? Conjuring on radio to me was even better than that. You know? And look at that. He's disappeared. Appeared. Right, great round of applause, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but when you were a kid listening to the uh, the wireless, I mean, did you ever have aspirations in that direction? Do you think it inspired you in any yeah, I think really what inspired me to go into the business, more, much, much more than radio, of course, was uh, the Croydon Empire, or Variety Theatre, you know. We used to go every Tuesday, Carnival Night. You know, my grand used to take me, me and her off there. <laughs> Carnival Night used to give away about three balloons and a <laughs> box of Cadbury's milk tray, you know. Uh, but there I saw a lot of people just after the war, you know. Yeah. And it was an interest, very interesting period for Variety. It was very much booming Variety just yeah. after the war. Everyone had come back from the forces, also relieved the war was over, and they wanted live entertainment. It was before television really got a grip. Right. And uh, I saw all sorts of people there. I mean, not only sort of young whiz kids who just sort of come out of the army, and that was people like sort of, uh, I suppose it would be Arthur English, you know, Peter Sellers, Spike Milligan, all the goons, Harry Seacombe, yeah. Max Bygraves, people like that. But also on the same bills, they usually were the first spot comics on. Mm. And later on the bills, they usually had the G.H. Elliots, you know, and the Hetty Kings, the Randolph Suttons, and all those sort of great stars from pre-war, you know, great musical stars who dated back to the great days of the musical. And I remember as a kid, really, sitting there, and I liked them better. I liked the old stars better, and I think what it was... They all tr you all try too hard when you're young, you know. You get up the station, you really try and grab the audience <laughs> by the throat, and you work hard. These old stars were so sort of uh, relaxed and, and laid back in their attitude, you know, and uh, they just sort of stood on the stage and uh, let the audience come to them. 
and it was marvellous composure, marvellous control they had. And I admired that. Even as a kid, I remember admiring that like mad. So I think they were the ones that really inspired me to want to do it for a living. Right. Mm. I works just like a good and I isn't over strong. And I'm mostly on me trotters all the time. So I'm glad when Easter Monday or a Whitson comes along. Cause a day of perfect rest is really prime So I lately took it easy Cause I had a day to spare With a wife and kiddies in their Sunday clothes It was a treat to make me mind up For a bit of country air And the pleasures of a quiet day's repose there was me and the missus and the half a dozen kids Starting in the morning for the zoo It was a precious way to go But we'd made our minds, you know And we took the lot to Hepping Forest too I get Barnet and Steve Peckham Rye At the Crystal Palace made a stay We got weary on our pin and we lost the blooming twins Still I'm glad we had a nice quiet day There was me and the missus and the half a dozen kids With nothing in the bottle but the bun Still I gave the kids a treat When we got to Newgate Street Cos I showed them where their uncle he was on West Ham, Wanstead, Woolwich, Wharf and Stow We reached a spot they call St Mary's Cray And then I says to Ma Now we mustn't go too far Cos I think we've had a nice quiet day Lightning, thunder, hailing pets and dogs Water streaming off me all the way and to finish up the night Well, the missus has a fight Still I'm glad we had a nice, quiet day I know we have a lot in common. You mentioned Croydon and the Croydon Empire, and uh, I saw Max Miller at the Croydon Empire, and I think you did too, did you? Indeed I did, yeah. yes, and yeah. saw Max Miller many times, you know, <laughs> not only at the Croydon Empire, but my gran was a great fan of his, and she would uh, go all over London, drag me all over London, Finsbury Park Empire, Chelsea Palace, Shepherd's Bush Empire, everywhere to see her hero, who was Max Miller. But he was best seen live. I mean, he wasn't really the radio. I mean, there were things like Workers' Playtime and, as you say, the sort of Saturday night shows, but mm. Max had to be seen live. Really. Oh, well, he was like all, all the really great comedians to me, you know, people like Ken Dodd, Tommy Cooper and all that. They're all people that you really had to see live in the theatre because someone once said it was like their conspiracy between them and the audience you know that's what it was all about and it's difficult to do that if you're just sitting at home listening to the radio or watching on television and it's so restrictive television particularly you know you it's got to be so many minutes it's got to be seconds rather you've got to be standing on this certain spot you can't get the audience at it like you can in a theater mm. and that was the great gift of max of course mm. the most brilliant stand-up comic i've ever seen mm. by a mile Headlines goes from strength to strength, but what are the future, Roy? I mean, yes, uh... that's a point, isn't it? You always worry about that. Well, getting that Sony Gold Award, I thought, well, this is the Gold Watch job, really. This isn't it. Thank you for for all your services to radio over the years. And I thought, does this mean the big, the big farewell kiss? Yeah. But apparently, we're coming back in this autumn anyway. Right. It'll be, uh, uh, we'll be into our fourteenth, into our fifteenth year in this autumn. And mm. I think it stayed as very simply because it is a topical show. Um, because we all thoroughly enjoy doing it. I mean, that does make a lot of difference, believe it or not. And we enjoy each other's company, myself, Jim Whitfield and Chris Emmett, and also a terrific, terrific turnover, mm. of, as I say, of writers. I mean, the show, if any show on radio is a writer's show, it is the headlines. Mm. And we always seem to find these young, young producers in radio who bring something new to the show, who are suddenly sort of inspired, even if we're feeling a bit down and say, we've been doing it for 13 years, they'll say, come up with some bright little idea, and immediately you spark off again. It's the great joy of, of radio. They do encourage young talent, much, much more than television. Yeah. 
And perhaps not enough credit is given to the writers. I'm thinking back, actually, to what Spike Milligan once said to me about the the, the, the effort that he had to put into producing The Goon Show week after oh, week. He said it took it. years off his life, and I can believe that. Yes, so can I. I mean, they reckon that the top whack, really, on um, headlines, the top whack, I suppose, really, is... Um, Three years, I would think, you know, <laughs> writing full blast for it. And after that, people say, I can't think of any more budget jokes. I can't think of any more anti killing jokes or any more anti Thatcher jokes. I've got to go. And I, it, it's a bit like sort of, it's very high pressure stuff, It's uh, you know, to, to write for a radio show like that. It's a bit sort of like, I suppose, in a way, it's like with yuppies who work on the stock exchange. You know, they can only spend so long looking at those screens and, and thinking on their feet, and then they have to do something else. And I think that's fair enough. It's, it's a very... eats up material, of course, eats up ideas. But, my God, it's worth it, you know, because people do love the show, and, uh, you know, we get terrific reaction and letters. And when I, wherever I travel all over the country, you know, you go into pubs and people come up, and people quote to me jokes, you know, we may have done ten years before. I'll never forget when you said that line about science. And that's ever so rewarding. I think what radio does, it does inspire great loyalty in an audience, much, much more than... It's not gimmicky radio, you know. It takes a long time to build up a regular audience on radio, but once you've got them, as long as you don't disappoint them and you don't let them down... They stick with you. Mm. There's an affection for people That's in right. radio. That's right, That's very much so, yeah. yeah. You find that with the people who work there, the producers, the programme controllers, everything. There's a great sort of feeling of camaraderie there, and I think it's, it's not such a cutthroat business as television, which isn't rather nice. It is only a part of your life, though, um, necessarily an important part of your life, but yeah. uh, the rest of your life, Roy, very briefly, I mean, where are you heading? What the rest of my life, very briefly. <laughs> Have a nice life. Yeah. Well, I mean, who knows where you're heading? I mean, that's the great thing about show business, is that really you don't know what's going to be around the next corner. Right. There's all sorts of ideas come up, you get terribly excited about a show or something, then it all falls through. You read a script, you think, this isn't very good. Some, some good director gets hold of it, and you work in it, and it turns into a, a smashing vehicle or something like that. It's the great thing about about our business that you never really know what's around the next corner and I always sort of say well my only ambition really is to sort of be carried off you know carried off the stage you know still trying to milk a laugh from them when I'm about 98 you know that would suit me fine. <laughs> I've got a pal a regular heart and heart She's a dear, good old girl, and I'll tell you all about her. Tis many years since first we met, her hair was then as black as jet. It's white enough, but she don't fret, not my old gal. We've been together now for 40 years, and it don't. Seem a day too much There ain't a lady Living in the land As I'd swap For my dear old Dutch No, there ain't a lady Living in the land As I'd swap For my dear old Dutch Now I calls her Sal, though her proper name is Sarah, and you may find a gal as you'd consider fairer, but she stuck to me through thick and thin, when luck was out, when luck was in, oh what a wife to me she's been, and what a pal. I sees you Sal, you're pretty ribbon sporty. Many years now, old gal, since them young days of courting. I ain't a coward, still I trust, when we've to part as part we must. The death may come and take me fast to wait, my pal. We've been together now for 40 years, and he don't. Seem a day too much Why, there ain't a lady Living in the land As I'd swap for my dear old Dutch No, there ain't a lady Living in the land As 
I'd swap for my dear old Dutch. Albert Chevalier's timeless composition, My Old Dutch, from Roy Hudd's very own music hall record on the flashback label FBLP 807. Nine And I know, I just know, a lot of people were joining in with My Old Dutch, a lovely song. Well, that was Roy Hudd on Nice and Easy.